Hello and welcome back to Boxes Shorts, where we take difficult issues from GCSC Sciences and try and do uh, short explainers plus activities and things for you to do. Um, by way of reminder, if you have any distractions anywhere near you, get rid of them. Uh, that includes mobile phones, other tabs on your laptop and the like. Um, and also, as we go through, there'll be certain activities I ask you to do, so make sure you do those. Uh, this video today, we are starting electrolysis. Now, I remind you, this is part of the chemical change unit. Uh, the first thing you should do in the chemical change unit is make sure you watch the first video in this playlist, which is about deducing ionic formulae. If you haven't watched that video, this lesson will be a lot, lot harder for you, uh, borderline impossible. So I would suggest, uh, advise you very strongly to make sure you go and do that first. All right, so um, I wanna start by looking at some substances. And the substances we're gonna look at are iron, oxygen, sodium, and chlorine. Why have I chosen these? Okay, so let's say, um, I need to get some iron, some pure iron. I want to use, you know, what, I'm just going to move this to over here. Uh, tell you what, let's um, let's put some squares here. Uh, there we go, nice lines. Okay, so let's say I want to um, get hold of some iron. Now we use iron for all sorts of things, a very important metal in uh, things like construction and industry. So I want to get hold of some iron. So I. I can't dig iron straight out of the Earth's crust. I dig into the Earth's crust and I get this stuff called iron oxide, for example. Uh, and let's say I want to get from there, I want to get some pure iron. Now, the first part of the uh, chemical changes unit is to do with the reactivity of metals. I've not done a video for that yet. Hopefully I will do one in due course. Um, you should have studied that anyway. Um, and you should know that the way that I extract iron in this case is simply by reacting it with carbon. And that gives me iron plus carbon dioxide. This type of reaction has a very special name. If you know the name, then you should shout it out on three. What is the name for this kind of a reaction? One, two, three. This is often called a reduction with carbon. And the reason why it works is because carbon is more reactive than iron and essentially steals the oxide bit from the iron. Okay, now let's say um, I've got a nice big lump of sodium chloride. And from that sodium chloride, I want to extract sodium. So let's say I just want to use the metal sodium for something. So I need to get some pure sodium from the sodium chloride. Now I can't add carbon and just hope that that reaction will work. It doesn't work. If you know the reason why it doesn't work, call out your answer on three. One, two, three. It doesn't work because carbon is less reactive than sodium. So here, carbon kicks off the iron and it steals the oxide. But here, the carbon can't kick off the sodium because it's less reactive than sodium. It just doesn't work. So if I want to get sodium, I have to do a special process and a special kind of chemical reaction. And that special kind of chemical reactions, move them back, that special kind of chemical reaction is called electrolysis. And it gives me sodium and chlorine. Now I hear you asking, what is this electrolysis? I'm sure I've heard of it before, but I don't know what it is. What we are going to be doing in this lesson and in the subsequent one, two, three lessons is figuring out what this process of electrolysis is and how it works. Now I looked online to find a picture of electrolysis um, that was free, but I couldn't. So I'm afraid, uh, and uh, I would take a picture at work, but I'm not at work. I'm working in my uh, loft at home as per usual. Um, so I can't really show you a picture. What I'll do is I'll draw it for you instead. So. Let's see if I can do it like this, if I can turn that off. Okay, so we start with, should this work? Yeah, there we go, that works quite nicely. So we start with, that's not straight. <laughs> oh well. We start with a kind of beaker cup that looks like this. Right, so that's a beaker, it's a cup. Can I move this a bit? Can I even let me select it? No, it's too late, it's all finished. So it's uh, just a beaker, like uh, one of the glass, stop doing that. This is Mr. Boxer struggling with his technology. There we go. Now things won't spin out. So you start with a beaker that looks a bit like this. And you fill that with some kind of liquid. Now you can do this with a solution as well, but solution is more complicated. So we're not going to deal with that in due course. Uh, we're not going to deal with that till later. And 
we're going to call this liquid or solution and we call it the electrolyte it has a special name the electrolyte and it means whatever you happen to be doing the electrolysis to so in this case sodium chloride that goes in there okay the thing that you're doing electrolysis to now interestingly it has to be a liquid or a solution i'll let you think about why that might be the case for a second The reason why that might be the case, and I'm not going to ask you to call this out to the screen because it's a difficult question. I've not told you the answer yet, um, is because it's a giant ionic, oh, it's just an ionic substance. And the structure is a giant ionic lattice, so it's an ionic substance. And what do you remember about liquids and solutions with regards to ionic substances? I hope you remember that they only conduct electricity when they are liquid or solution. If you used a solid, it wouldn't work. And the reason why it wouldn't work is because it doesn't conduct electricity. And you see this electro that's running the whole way through, electro, electro, electrolysis, electrolyte. That's because we use electricity here. How exactly do we use this electricity? Well, we have these like uh, carbon rods, like these kind of big sticks made of graphite. Um, and graphite is, of course, made of carbon and it conducts electricity, which again, you should know from the structural bonding unit. And we hook those up in an electrical circuit. Like this. So there's power, there's a current going through these and through this liquid electrolyte. So obviously, obviously, it needs to be able to conduct electricity or the current won't flow. If this doesn't conduct electricity, then there's not a complete circuit. It just doesn't work. Nothing happens. So these are what we call graphite. They have a name. electrodes graphite electrodes and again that's a word that you need to know uh, we're going to learn a bit more detail about these electrodes uh, later on but for the minute we'll just leave them as graphite electrodes now what i can do here this is electrolysis and what happens is i uh, essentially get my elements so i start with my sodium chloride and i get out of this sodium plus chlorine where and how exactly they form we'll look at later on for the minute for the minute you know as, as i tr always try to do in these videos i try to break things down as much as possible so for the minute all you need to know is that these are the electrodes but now right here that's your power supply This, of course, is your um, electrolyte down here, which has to be liquid or solution, otherwise it doesn't conduct electricity. Uh, and you get out of it these lovely elements, sodium and chlorine. So you get out elements, e.g. sodium and chlorine. Yeah, you, know, you don't always get sodium and chlorine. It depends on what you're using in here. But as an example, you'd be getting sodium and chlorine. Pause your video now and copy all of this down please okay you should have got all that down uh, which means we can go back to here so again we see just a by way of recap in electrolysis you're going from sodium chloride to sodium chlorine but you could be using anything at all so you know let's say i was using uh, aluminium bromide I can do electrolysis on that as well. What I'd like you to do is after three, I'd like you to call out what you think the product here will be. So if I start with aluminium bromide, what do you think I'm going to get over here? Call out on three, what you think I'm going to get if I start with aluminium bromide. One, two, three. Well, I'm hoping you said aluminium and bromine. Nice and easy. You've got the aluminium bit and you've got the bromide bit, which is coming from bromine. All right, um, here are some questions for you to have a go at. Uh, what I'd like you to do is pause your screen and write out uh, answers to each of these questions and then press play when you're ready. Pause your screen now.
OK, I'm um, hoping that you've done these questions now uh, so we can go over some answers. So a student wants to electrolyze sodium chloride. If sodium chloride is a solid, what must be done to it before it can be electrolyzed? So here we'll say it either needs to be melted or dissolved in water. Nice and straightforward. What's the electrolyte in this case? Oh, sodium chloride. that's the thing that I'm doing electrolysis to. From memory, list the apparatus required to electrolyze sodium chloride. So we'd have a beaker, graphite electrodes, power supply, uh, and I guess you need wires or what we call leads. So the wires that go from the power supply, so a bit clearer, to go from the power supply to the electrodes. Word equation electrolysis of molten sodium chloride. So we, that's the one that we did already. Sodium plus chlorine. Lithium fluoride, we'll get lithium plus fluorine. Magnesium oxide, we'll get magnesium plus oxygen and aluminium bromide, we'll get aluminium plus bromine. And that says deduce, work out the formula for each of the subjects in question, for each of the substances in question four. So that'll be these ones. So here we'll have NaCl. And if you don't remember how to do this, you need to go back a video. There we spend, there's a nice video that explains how we work all these things out. Lithium fluoride is LiF, magnesium oxide is just MgO, aluminium bromide is AlBr3. And if you got that wrong, then you really should go back to that video. Okay, that's electrolysis uh, in a nutshell. Let's try and make things um, a bit more complicated. Uh, I'm just trying to, okay. Right, um, in terms of making, uh, it's always difficult to figure out where the best place to start is. Um, I tell you what, when we've got sodium chloride, sorry, my phone just fell off. Uh, when we've got sodium chloride, uh, we know that we've got NaCl. And we know that NaCl is made up of Na plus and Cl minus. Now, when it's a solid, you know, I'm going to change it to black. When it's a solid, that means I've got these little Na plus ions bonded to these Cl minus ions, like that. And it's also three dimensional, like this. And I will give you a few seconds to try and remember the name of this kind of a structure. What is the name of this kind of structure? It goes on and on and on and on forever. In a 3D, big, big kind of thing. In a grid almost, what do we call this? On three, one, two, three. This is a giant ionic lattice. Now, when it's a solid, these are held together quite strongly. But if I were to melt it, Maybe I'll draw circles around these just to make it really clear. So each of these is an ion, like this. When I melt it, those ions break away from each other and they kind of all get jumbled up. This is where I reach the limits of my drawing ability. So they all get kind of jumbled up like this and they, they sort of become a bit more free to move all around like that, all over the place like this, okay? Now, what that means is that when I do electrolysis, let's just take that and apply it to electrolysis. So I've got my big kind of beaker, and I'm not gonna bother faffing around with those lines again, a waste of time. I've got my big kind of beaker with my electrode like this, and my electrode like that and my power supply like this. I've got this liquid, but if I were to kind of 
zoom in and zoom in and zoom in on that liquid, what I would see are these Na plus and Cl minus ions all kind of just moving around, moving and flowing around quite freely and easily. Now, why this gets complicated is because, you know, when you look at a battery, it's got a plus end and a minus end. All circuits have what we call a negative end and a positive end. Now, in this case, that means this electrode here is negative and this electrode here is positive. They have special names. The positive one is called the anode and the negative one is called the cathode. And the way that people kind of typically remember these is by writing panic like that. So positive is anode and negative is, I guess, cathode. Okay, so that's the way that people write them, remember them. I don't really care how you remember them. You just need to, and you need to know that the positive one is the anode, the negative one is the cathode. Now, put it like this, if I am an Na plus, and suddenly someone turns on this circuit and there's this massive negative electrode, this massive negative source over here, and I'm a positive, that's, I really need to make it super clear what's going on with this Na plus. Just give me a sec. Right, there we go. I'm an Na plus, I've got a nice positive charge. Well, obviously, I'm going to get attracted to that giant whacking negative, like, like bar full of charge, full of negativeness. I'm positive. I'm going to get attracted. What's the name of the force that's going to make me attracted there? I'll let you think about it for a second. What's the name of the force? OK, on three, what's the name of the force? One, two, three. I'm hoping you said electrostatic force of attraction. I'm going to get attracted over there. And if I'm a Cl minus ion and I've got a nice negative charge, I'm going to get attracted to that positive bar full of charge, you know, this bar full of positive charge. You know, and I could, you know, Cl minus from here is going to get attracted there and an Na plus from there is going to get attracted there and so on and so forth. Again, for the billions and billions of ions that are in this liquid. Now, I end up getting sodium here. And I end up getting chlorine here. So you remember, overall, I said, we go from sodium chloride to sodium and chlorine. Now, where those elements appear is what we're talking about now. So the sodium comes off at the cathode, and the chlorine comes off at the anode. And broadly, as a rule of thumb, the metal is going to come off at the cathode, and the non-metal is going to come off at the anode. I strongly suggest you pause your video and you get this down now by way of summary. Pause your video and get that down, please. Okay, you should only be listening to my voice if you've got that all down now. Let's take magnesium chloride as another example. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to do this. I'd like you to write that down and complete the word equation for the electrolysis of magnesium chloride there, please. Okay, if you need a bit more time, make sure to pause the video. If you're done, what you should have is magnesium over here and chlorine over there. Now what I'd like you to do is write down which forms at which electrodes. So uh, underneath, I want you to write either anode or cathode here, and I want you to write either anode or cathode here. 
pause the video and write down anode or cathode here and write down anode or cathode there. Okay, you should only be listening to me now if you did this. Magnesium, of course, comes at the negative one, the cathode. The reason for that is because the magnesium is the one with the positive charge. The chlorine, therefore, will form at the anode. The chlorine has a negative charge and is therefore attracted to the positive anode. And you've got to make sure you're using that word, by the way, attracted. If you write moved to, then uh, you end up not getting as many marks as you'd like. OK, um, here's some more examples for you to have a go at. So again, pause your video and have a go at these questions, please. OK, you should have done those questions by now. You should only be listening to my voice if you've done them. And again, I remind you, if you are not going to do these activities, you are wasting your time. There is no point in you carrying on with these videos. You must make sure you are doing the questions. All right, in the electrolysis of zinc chloride, what is the electrolyte? Pretty simply, zinc chloride. OK, in uh, the electrolysis of each of the, mol of the molten compounds below, so this word molten, by the way, if I'm sorry if I didn't explain that before. Molten just means liquid. But you should, again, sorry, you should know that word from um, uh, when you did structure and bonding. So here we'll have calcium. Sorry. Not caldium. Calcium plus iodine. Here you'll have lithium and bromine. Here you'll have iron and fluorine here you'll have sodium and oxygen and here you'll have potassium and chlorine if you need a minute more to mark your work just pause the video and do so the question says for each of the compounds state which electrode the which uh, each element will be produced all of these get produced at the cathode and all of these get produced at the and then finally the formula for each of the compounds in the question so calcium iodide will be CaI2 lithium bromide will be LiBr iron fluoride uh, sorry I should have been clear there I wasn't clear but uh, iron can have a variable charge, um, so it'd either be um, Fe, F2, or Fe, F3. Don't worry about that too much because it's a mistake on my part. Normally what they do in the question is they tell you what charge iron has, so don't worry about this one, it's my bad. Sodium oxide is Na2O, and potassium chloride is KCl. So with the exception of this one, if you got all of these right, great. If you didn't, then you must make sure you go back to the video earlier on in this playlist. Okay, uh, that's the end of this particular video. Um, the next one is about something called a half equation. Now I did this video um, before I started using this uh, fancy notepad thing. So it uses uh, different technology, but it is still part of uh, this playlist. So don't be confused by that, it's called half equations. And then after that, we will jump back into electrolysis and we will make things um, one hell of a lot more complicated. As ever, thank you for listening and I look forward to seeing you next time.